Longtime fans of the show are going to get a kick out of this one. Today's episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is brought to you by 1Password. We'll be telling you about all the great features of 1Password later in the show, but we just wanted to say thank you to Agile Bits and 1Password for sponsoring this episode. Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo here with my Canadian co-host. Well, I'm actually American. I just happen to be on Canadian soil at the moment. I'm yeah. Brian Schulmeister. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to be a turncoat soon. You're moving up to the Great White North. Yeah, well, you know, it's only a it'll only be a temporary, you know, safety valve because at some point the dude's going to look up and go, hey, I heard there's oil up there. <laughs> oil and uh, poutine. <laughs> yes, poutine. poutine. Because, because his, you know, his hair looks like a, somebody dumped a plate of poutine on his head. It does look so. like a, you know, a nice curdy cheese, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. And we lost listeners. No, I'm sure we did. Anyway, <laughs> look, we're going to start off the show. Sadly, one one last time, people. We yep. are so close to our goal for the survey. If you go to grumpyoldgeeks.com slash survey, take 30 seconds, fill it out. You'll never have to hear from us again. We are so close. And if you're listening to this and you you've heard this time and time again and you haven't done it, Please, you know, yeah. all, we, we need like what? 20 people to do it. That's it. Yeah, we're 20 down to of you. 20 more. So grumpyoldgeeks.com slash survey. Please go fill that out for us. It'll we're help us out a lot. So close. And then we'll never, ever have to ask you for that stuff again until maybe uh, next year. <laughs> well, a couple <laughs> couple years, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, you and I talk about the uh, this basic income type of project on the show quite a bit because we've, yep. we we think the technology is has destroyed the middle class and is going to keep doing that. And we're working towards a Star Trekian utopia where everybody will not have to do a <laughs> damn thing except robot repair and robot programming. But how do the rest of the people get by? So uh, we've got some follow up this week on uh, on <laughs> this same topic. So I just wanted to let people know this is why we cover this, because we think that we are moving faster and faster towards an automated world where you won't even have to drive yourself to the store where you can't afford a tomato. But uh, yeah, I, I, it's pretty much inevitable. And if you read any of the economics that have come out, particularly since the election, you know, you can run around and say that you're going to bring jobs back. Uh, you're not. And more are going to go away because things are just going to get automated. As we all know, Uber is just itching for the self-driving cars to get approved so they can basically fire their entire workforce. We we know the we know the way this is going. Yes. And, and everybody's even all the yeah. Uber's like, hey, this is great. Come make some money with us until we don't need you anymore. Yep. So uh, the first article that I'm going to throw in here is uh, this is a medium post it's a couple weeks old and uh, we're trying to figure figure out when to put it in but uh, it's called the lie that data is scarce costs the working poor a fourth of their working lives now this is an article that does the math on if you make minimum wage and you need cell phone and internet access that it can cost you up to 25 percent of your basic income yeah, it's basically prohibitively expensive to ha to have a cell phone or or you know an internet plan at home with your cable package. Uh, if you're making minimum wage, you can't afford it. No, you can't. You can't. It costs do it. as much as as you're theoretically supposed to spend on your rent. I've always heard you know you never spend more than a fourth of your income on your rent. Um, this is you know being connected is costing these people a fourth of their income. That's insane, and it, it's ephemeral. It's it's not even a real cost. Yeah. So. so. Check it out. If you if you make minimum wage and you wonder why you can't afford those Cheerios tomorrow for your kid, that's why. You're probably also not listening to this podcast because, you know, data. Data. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we've also talked about the basic income uh, issues. And there is a new basic income project that's launching in January and it is launching in Africa. It's a two yep. year. It's a, it's launching in Uganda, Uganda. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's for two years. And. It's the uh, filmmaker named uh, Stephen Jansons is actually going to be making a documentary about the entire project called Village One. The trailer will be in the link in the show notes. I highly recommend you check it out because they kind of do uh, some of the basic math on on what they're what they're giving the people. And it's not that much money. It it, it works out to about eighteen dollars and twenty five cents a month. Well, yeah, for Africa. 
Right. But that's what I'm it's saying. It's going to be a bit more expensive in other places. Um, the interesting thing is in reading this article, I had no idea because they list some of the other places that are trying out trial programs or gearing up to do them. Oakland, California. Had no idea. No. Well, so moved, that'll... moved to Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, everybody move to Oakland. Take your last Uber ride there. Oh, uh, you, well, you need you need basic income for for <laughs> ammunition if you're going to live in Oakland. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've got another article from uh, TechCrunch, who I'm mm-hmm. not a huge fan of, but it's called "Welcome to the Future of Work" and talks about uh, all the different bits and pieces about what what we can expect in the future. Uh, highly recommend going and checking this one out as well. Th- basically, if we go into all of these articles, we will spend the entire show doing it. So. Pretty much. Uh, if you're if you're thinking about a career change, go read this article. And you know, TechCrunch is fine. It's just their design is so horrid. Oh, I know. God, that eight bit. <laughs> um, and the last one I've got is uh, from. It's called Makeover Monday: The Wealth Gap. And this data architect uh, from Clemson actually did the uh, a, a graph, an interactive graph. That's the word I was looking for. Interactive. I haven't used that since the nineties. <laughs> But um, you can roll over all these data points for like, you know, the last hundred or so years and see what the wealth inequality was back in the day. And uh, when the top one percent had the most money and then or top uh, point one percent had the most money. And when the the unwashed masses like ourselves had had the greater wealth and just get a little sad and say, huh, maybe it's time for a junta. I'm just going to point out again, and this is not, you know, I, I wish he would have dropped in uh, Democrat versus Republican because uh, I can just roughly going over the years and charting the rise with Republicans. And then all of a sudden it gets a little bit better with Democratic presidencies. Then it goes back up with the Republicans. And again, eh, yeah, well, you that. know, that's whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the most important takeaway for me on this was the uh, the guy that is making these. Uh, his name is what is Matt Chambers. He goes. Uh, his blog is Sir Vizalot. I know. I like a that a lot. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's good times there. <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, and then I had my my follow up as well. I talked about the great Toblerone bullshittery of last week. Maltesers are also screwing us. <laughs> Actually, we have our title there, except we can't put bullshit in it. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, Maltesers have also been screwing us. They've been shrinking behind our backs for years. We have a link in the show notes that shows how we're getting screwed on our Maltesers. Oh God! Well, it, it, you know, I need to go take a uh, take a ruler to my sweet tarts. That's the only <laughs> that's the only candy I still eat. But uh, if my sweet tarts are shrinking, then I will definitely join the protest. Ironically, taking a ruler to my to my <laughs> to my sweet. <laughs> also, a movie title coming up in the security <laughs> segment. In the news. We just uh, survived Cyber Monday, or what they call Black Monday, uh, and online shopping record. Uh, 3.45 billion, apparently, was spent. That's uh, a record for the uh, largest day in the U.S. e-commerce history, according to Adobe, which which monitors these things. I did not know Adobe monitored these things. That's very bizarre. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Like, yeah. What I, Adobe, I thought you were making really crappy software you forced me to subscribe to now. Yeah, fucking fix Flash. I don't care how much people <laughs> spend on stuff. So uh, who knew that Adobe had some sort of monitoring arm, but apparently they do. So, mm. you know, uh, whatever, uh, you know, everybody knows that they're going to be out of a job in a couple of years, but they're still spending money like no tomorrow. Yeah, yes, they so are. Good on you. Uh, top selling items included uh, very useful things like a Sony PlayStation 4, Samsung 4K TVs, Lego sets and the Pie Face game. What did you buy? Nothing. Uh, I bought a bocce ball set for my dad. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, didn't I bought a, it through my Echo. <laughs> I said, oh, nice. Echo, uh, Echo, tell me your deals. Oh, shit. I think she just woke up. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yep, yeah, sure did. Well, <laughs> and speaking of Amazon, where most people probably did do uh, their online cyber shopping on Monday. Um, I read this story and got really angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how did Amazon conquer American retail? Well, they did it with over seven hundred and sixty million dollars in public money. Oof. So, just to paraphrase some uh, some of the article really quickly, um, it's hard to remember holiday shopping before Amazon, um, which has basically devastated tens of thousands of local businesses throughout the country, which once sold things in person. 
Uh, how do they do it? They couldn't have done it without us. We've embraced the convenience and prices of e-commerce, of course, but we've also supported the tax breaks that have made the company so competitive with local bookstores, Best Buy, and everything in between. Like most companies, most larger companies, Amazon plays aggressively with states and localities to get tax breaks, pitting politicians from neighboring municipalities against each other. Uh, and a new analysis, analysis from the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, which is, you know, that snappy ILSR. <laughs> yeah. It's a nonprofit that advocates for local economic development, which is a good thing, people. Um, tried to put a number on just how much Amazon has saved from taxpayers in the United States. $760 million between 2005 and 2014. Isn't that great? Uh, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of Prime accounts right there. Yes, it is. And I would just like to point out to the listeners that Brian is not on his spaceship and the hyperdrive has not kicked in, but he is in a basement in Canada where sometimes... Hot water heaters and uh, the, yeah, the home heater might the home heater might kick in. We will uh, try and filter some of that out. But if you hear it, we apologize. We're doing the best we can this week. It, it's effing cold out there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Do you have the snow up there? Uh, we it snowed the first three days I was here. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's coming tonight. So uh, yeah, sorry, man. Uh, uh, so Fitbit is close to buying Pebble. Pebble that why kicks, and that, why? Well, here's the here's the, here's the issue. Um, Pebble is going for cheap because nobody's buying them. <laughs> yep, so, shocking. Uh, and Fitbit probably wants the OS. So then they can okay. make their Fitbits even better. Uh, and uh, yeah, because <laughs> and, and Fitbit's just struggling right now, too, because their stock uh, was at forty nine dollars not so long ago. And now it's at nine. Uh, so it's sixty one. It's down sixty one percent for the year so far. And I would just like to say a hearty fuck you. To uh, grumpy old geeks iOS developer Trent Hamilton, who uh, gave me a buy recommendation on Fitbit after he cashed out and made a ton of money, and I lost I, a bunch of money. I would like to point out to you two things. You should have known better to purchase a stock for something that has been taken over by a cell phone stock. You don't need a Fitbit when it, your cell phone does the same damn thing, so of course their sales are going to go down. And number two... Trent Hamilton has never stated that he does long-term investment. He always does short-term and shorting. So. Yeah, pump and dump little fucker. Hate you, god <laughs> damn it, but love your dogs. Anyway, um, so what's interesting, though, a few days ago, I finally pulled the plug on my quantified self-experiment that has been going on for, what, six years, seven years now? Right. I have mm. taken off my Fitbit for good, after, mm. especially after their stock dropped, you little bastards. Um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, after logging 17,642,242 steps, 21,146 floors, and 8,552 miles, I have finally called it quits on my Fitbit. So, I've also called it quits on my Apple Watch. What? I, I, am, I, am, in a, I am in a war right now to regain attention. And do, 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 breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. So these things are boxed up and getting ready to be given as as Christmas gifts. Um, I'm done with the betting. Them. The betting pool for Jason having his watch back on starts online uh, tomorrow. Nope, Just start tweeting, tweeting me your squares. We're going to we're going to figure this out. Yeah, well, you go for it. Uh, I'm four days into this thing and I have had a noticeable quality of life improvement and I am going to stick with it. I have read books like not listen to them on Audible, read books. Um, just the, the, the amount of attention that comes back after just a little change like that really, really is staggering. I don't, I don't have to like, look at my Fitbit app to see what, if I have to go for a walk, I'm like, I'm going to walk until I feel like I don't feel like walking anymore. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying I'm a little bit happier now that I've, I've pulled the plug on that one, those two aspects of my life. A, I don't have Slack pinging me every six minutes on my wrist. Um, the downside is the one thing that I did enjoy about my Apple Watch was to be able to look at my wrist and see how cold it is outside. So I knew how many layers of coats and hoodies and T-shirts I had to put on before I took Bam Bam for a walk. Brian Drake. Well, again, you know, <laughs> uh, damn it. You can, uh, you know, look at your phone or ask your Echo. Huh? I can do that. And I have, I have actually started to ask my Echo. I'm going to have to whisper it because she will actually wake up, bitch. <laughs> Echo, flash briefing. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I'm wearing headphones, so. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, we've also talked a lot about uh, technology and how it's like we're tired of fart apps. Use your giant brains to make the world a better place. 
Well, Google is actually doing that, and they're trying to catch diabetic blindness before it is too late. Well, that's good on you. Look, yeah. something useful. They're training their AI to basically what it normally comes down to, down to is like ophthalmologists have to look at photos of the back of your eye and look for these little tiny variances in blood vessels to see if they're bursting or whatnot. And they are training uh, the Google AI to look at these images and see if they can actually pull out the data. And it turns out that they are pretty much on par. They've got it to the point where they have the same level of error that an actual ophthalmologist would at this point so they're getting there that's that's pretty impressive that's so good on you google i i i'm, I'm angry about something though jason hmm. uh throughout the show notes for this week uh, you and i put in a bunch of stories and I, when did the definition of ai officially change because we don't actually have ai yet when we have ai that's when we're worried <laughs> about skynet and we all fucking die but everybody calls their shit ai you do not have ai they have narrow AI. They don't have broad AI. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you 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 have your definition. And they have theirs. <laughs> that's the problem with the world. <laughs> <laughs> Words mean something. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody, go to Miriam Schulmeister for the next <laughs> the next definition uh, rundown. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's one that pisses me off to no end. Mm -hmm. The New York Times subscription growth soars tenfold, adding 132,000 new subscribers after Trump won the election. Oh, good. That's just like, uh, you know, everybody Googling what does Brexit mean the day after. Right. Here's what pisses me off about this, though. Yesterday, I got an email from the New York Times because I am a loyal subscriber. I pay for the print and digital editions. They, they, they sent me an email saying, hey, your rates are going up. <laughs> Well, I'm sure their AI <laughs> determined this was a good time to increase the price. Yep. Uh, obviously, that has to be what it is. So um, <laughs> thank you and fuck you very much. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you know, of course, they're going to try to increase the price right now. They're seeing extra demand. The whole idea of like flat pricing or regular pricing is out the window. Or, you know, you want a version of this. Just go to my dad's house any day. And listen to him talk about how, you know, DirecTV doesn't give him any deals. But if he was a new customer, he'd be getting a great deal. Oh, we'll be we getting. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. The, do that every Sunday, people. Uh, well, it, hopefully he doesn't subscribe to Netflix. Because remember back in the day, the whole uh, the, the big kerfuffle when you're a longtime subscriber to Netflix and you wanted to go get a DVD and like the new releases, they would yeah. only give the new releases to new subscribers. And you had to wait weeks to get that, uh, you know, DVD of the notebook that your girlfriend had been waiting for. And and for the record, I still have never seen the notebook, but Brian has many times. So I'd like to rub it in. It's because I have a wife. <laughs> yes, I would prefer. I, I prefer my dog <laughs> over a wife if I can never, ever watch the notebook. Maybe there's a dog version of the notebook. <laughs> oh, God. OK, moving on. All right, so the fake news stuff and the whole Facebook news stuff has, has been yeah, annoying as well. Um, so Elite Daily uh, was one of the one of companies that that figured out how to tap into Facebook back when BuzzFeed was before BuzzFeed was doing news and they were just doing listicles and they were doing it as well. They basically gamed the Facebook system to basically create an entire business and you know generating high volume, stupid content but massive click throughs. Bullshit uh, Kardashian stories galore. Yeah. Exactly. So the Daily Mail bought them at the time because obviously, you know, these guys have figured out how to get the get eyeballs. And, They've reached uh, the millennials. <laughs> yes. They told Business Insider at the time that buying the startup meant that we now have 50 percent of all millennials in the U.S. coming to one of our sites. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're now what? Just a couple of years later, two years, three years later, uh, just two years, actually. Yeah, yeah, they, they bought them in January 2015. So coming up on two years. And the Daily Mail has stated that the Facebook publisher uh, is actually completely and utterly worthless. Yep. They spent $40 million on them, and now they're worth nine. So that's, what, a $31 million loss, if my math is correct? $31 million loss, and because Facebook, of course, changed the rules, they're absolutely useless. Don't build your house in somebody else's backyard. As everybody says, as they go to Snapchat to start doing their stories. Yeah, well, you know, some people, yeah, good time. Some people never learn. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of not, not learning, uh, we've got some bad news coming out of the UK. Uh, UK state surveillance has basically been expanded 
20 gazillion fold to a frightening level. And much like Brexit, if you think it's only going to happen there or not here, good luck to you. Yep. So here we go. It's called the Snoopers Charter. Not really, but it's basically what everybody's talking about. Uh, it's come down to basically the fact that over 250 some odd government agencies uh, now have the ability and right to request at any time uh, from any of the telecoms in Britain for a complete and utter list of all websites you have looked at access to your complete browser history uh which they are required to uh keep and store so if you do not have yeah VPN, this is this is the part where i would like to say if you go to grumpyoldgeeks.com slash vpn <laughs> if you live in england we highly recommend a private internet access as your vpn of choice uh, i would recommend going to that site now before this takes effect so they don't have a record of you going to get a vpn <laughs> do it from your neighbor's <laughs> internet connection <laughs> Yeah. Now, speaking of your dad and his direct TV woes, <laughs> um, AT&T is uh, they are the poster boy for what the death of net neutrality actually looks like, because yep. now they are launching direct TV now, which is a streaming video service, which uh, you can get for free if you get your Internet through AT&T with no uh, no pings to your data. Oh, how convenient. Yes, thank you, Zero Rating, and FCC's utter failure to see how this is going to affect net neutrality. Thank you very much, government agency. Well, and that's game over for that. Net neutrality is basically out the window for this country. So, Yeah, no, the genie is out of the bottle, and we talked about it. It's just, it's the way it's going to be. So, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, open that wallet. Open that wallet, people. That's what it's. That's where we're going to. Yep, it's all going to get more expensive. Uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, since you're up in Canada, maybe you can go visit the new Internet Archive Mirror. Oh, well, they have to keep everything in French as well as English. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> poor, poor guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, Brewster Kale, who runs the Internet Archive, just does not like the writing on the wall. He says with the new Trump presidency. And the Internet Archive lives in San Francisco right now on the old uh, base where Lucasfilm is and mm -hmm. uh, just said, uh, yeah, we just want to have a backup just That's in case. That's a good idea. Let's have which a backup they, somewhere else. Which they should have had anyway. What if, what if, you know, some idiot at the Internet Archive downloads some ransomware? That's a good point. Yeah, the Not having a backup is silly. <laughs> and they, they literally are in the backup business. They are backing up the Internet. So you hope you that they have, have a backup of the backup. Uh-huh. Yep. So this is their first off-site backup, which uh, to me is kind of silly, but uh, yeah. it's about time. Good on you. And, you yeah, know, good choice. It's uh, nice it, up here. In odd news, Microsoft is telling their developers, whatever you're doing in Linux, Windows 10 will soon do it too. Okay. They, we've talked about this on the show before, how they're they're kind of baking in bits of the Linux kernel into Windows. Yep. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. This is like, you know, get your peanut butter out of my chocolate. Get your chocolate out of my <laughs> peanut butter. But it doesn't come with a happy ending of a Reese's peanut butter cup. It comes with just more complexity in other ways people can break into your Windows box. Yeah, I mean, there's that. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt right now, because as we pointed out a couple times now, uh, whoever would have thought that we'd be saying good things about Microsoft. And they've had a few hits recently. They have. They have. Um. Unfortunately, what I'm hearing about that Surface Pro thing, you know, with the the lay, the, basically the iMac that you can fold, mm -hmm. um, is it is extremely underpowered for what it is and isn't really the the best thing that you can get for the money. Right. So hopefully, version everybody's looking for version two on that one to to really amp it up. Gotcha. So hopefully, because yeah, man, that thing was sexy. <laughs> it was. Can't wait to see it. No. Um, Guy I know named Cal Newport wrote some amazing books, has an awesome article in the New York Times saying, quit social media, your career may depend on it. This comes back to the focus issue that I was talking about previously, where, you know, I've, I've gotten rid of my quantified data collection devices and that now have more focus and more attention. And he's saying that uh, you should maybe think about getting rid of your social media, too, for various reasons. And he's written several books about it, like Deep Work and uh, So Good They Can't Ignore You. And uh, very smart guy. Very, very smart guy. And uh, he sells thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of books, but he has no social media uh, presence whatsoever. So you don't have to be on Twitter just to sell a book or uh, pimp yourself out. I'd argue you don't have to be on Twitter for anything. That's true, too. You would argue that. <laughs> and I tell you what, every day that goes by and I log on to Twitter or Facebook, for that matter, 
I just feel a little bit of myself dying inside because there's nothing good that comes out of it. Well, you apparently you need to be on Snapchat, Jason. Nope, don't need to do that either. <laughs> I, I kind of agree with you, but there's an interesting long form article, so we'll just have the link in the show notes. You can that go that means that means the... that means that there's a lot of words that nobody's going to read, right? That's what long Probably, form means for the most part, especially if they're actually interested in Snapchat, because that's just about pictures with some scribbles <laughs> on it. So, um, but apparently we're all wrong. Uh, Snapchat is actually, you know, just because they they have a UI that basically only is meant to appeal to somebody under the age of twenty. And uh, we just old folk just kind of go, well, <laughs> what are we supposed to do here? Uh, the one good thing that they are doing, and I do kind of agree with this, is because the, the UI is so bizarre and there's no straight up kind of just, you know, news and posting interface, the, there's actual curation and editing that has to be done by people including news and the fact that this is the only social network that is currently promoting the actual real news being done instead of just viral bullshit, fake stories that get passed around. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, you know, you know what we've been in the past. Hmm. Wrong. 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 So yes, we have been, have been wrong on occasion, but uh, for this, here's the thing, you know, nothing surprises me any for anymore. Because we have talked on the show several times about how BuzzFeed's news department <laughs> is yeah, now one of the best in the business. And, and that's not being facetious. That is not seven ways that BuzzFeed news is better than CNN. This is actually, they started a news division that is pretty good. So if yep. Snapchat can do it with their little pictures and their glasses and, oh, I'm sorry, spectacles, um, yes. And I always have to say spectacles, testicles, wallet watch whenever I say Snapchat spectacles because it makes me feel good inside because my OCD requires it. But yeah, <laughs> it's stranger things can happen that Snapchat will soon be the bastion of news for us. Uh, it could be. It seems to be that the, they're positioning themselves to to be the social network that will survive every all of this. Who knew? Okay. So I hope we're not wrong, though, because I, I hate Snapchat. Uh, one thing that we were wrong about, or at least I was, um, and most of online journalism, this was not the year of the bot. Oh, surprise. The, the, the messaging bot that was so ballyhooed uh, at the end of the year last year and was one of my top like five things to watch in 2016 never really took off, did it? I could have told you that one. Oh, wait, maybe I did. I might you have to go have. back and, and, and look at that because I thought this was bullshit from the get go. You might have. And you know, one of the main reasons, Jason, why, Brian, because they all say they have AI and they fucking don't. <laughs> you That's go. why the problem is the AI isn't there. There is no real artificial intelligence. These things are dumb as a box of rocks, so they don't understand what you're saying. They can't give you the right responses. And they're just not catching on yet. They're not there. The tech isn't there yet, but it, it will be. The thing about it is all they're doing is converting text and they're doing natural language processing on it, trying to figure yep. out your intent and they can't fucking do it. Yeah. So. And to go you know, to do a call back to the show that we ran last week, uh, Mark Cantor, I built way back in the day using his product, Micromedia Director. I built a world party for the band World Party, Carl Wallinger. I built the World Party Oracle which I basically just tagged a whole bunch of responses based off keywords. And uh, it worked just as well as these damn bots do. And I did that 20 years ago. And they're still doing the same thing. I, I did that in Pearl. <laughs> I honestly did that in Pearl for Star Trek First Contact in 1995. So, yep. which is about the same time you did the World Party side, I think, too. Uh, so, yeah. So we've been, you know, we were building bots back then. They're which is any. why I, that that's going back to why I knew this was bullshit. This did not have the ring of truth, as Judge Judy would say. I can't believe you. Name check Judge Judy. I uh, watch a lot of Judge Judy. She's she's a successful woman. OK, I only put this story <laughs> in the show notes because of the name, because we've talked about the Belfie and now there's the Elfie. Oh, no. <laughs> Yelp is basically trying to expand to bring Snapchat esque features. Uh, so now instead of just typing in a review or giving a few stars, they want you to basically get yourself Yelp famous and not be anonymous anymore and shoot little videos and Yelfies of you eating your food. And letting people know how the place is. And I, I do want to say it was the Dickie, not the Belfie. We, uh, but we titled a show Belfies. What were Belfies, Belfies again? I can't remember. You came up with it. Well, no, I came up with Dickies because if, if you know, a selfie is a picture of yourself, then a dick pic was a Dickie. That I was remember what the 
he was. I'm sure our <laughs> listeners can tell us. Yes, please do. Remind us of the things that we've said on the show because we're old and we actually forget. <laughs> well, I Googled it and apparently it's a backwards or booty selfie, but I'm sure that's what we weren't talking about. Actually, that sounds pretty much on par with things that we would discuss on the show. Well, at least on my side of the, the aisle, maybe not yours, because Perhaps you're a too. family man with a young child and you don't <laughs> want don't want that out there. Yeah. Uh, remember a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about Juno, which has the uh, they're attempting to do the same. They're there's, you know, an Uber esque type company. <laughs> they're but Uber they're, with they're, stock options. Yes. Their big thing was we're going to give you stock options. So, you know, when we fire you, you'll still make money. Yes. Um, well, Uber is now deactivating New York drivers that happen to also drive for Juno because Juno's. uh <laughs> I don't know if you've been to a restaurant recently, like any of the one, any of the big ones, Jason, that does all the delivery services. But you'll go there and like if you sit at the bar, you'll see 19 different iPads, one for each delivery service. So when orders come in, <laughs> they, they pick up the one. You know, I was like, why don't you just have one iPad with all the apps? on? Uh, anyways, they don't do that. And the drivers <laughs> they've apparently, apparently don't- never heard of notifications. No, they've never heard of notifications. And apparently drivers that drive for these things don't do that either. They have multiple phones. And so the problem being, if the the phone with the Juno wait screen on it actually has a display advertising a discount for first-time riders, which is apparently illegal. So Uber is basically canning anybody that has had it or something like that. It's very confusing. Stop driving for these companies. Yeah. (laughs) Go, go. Go learn how to program a bot. (laughs) <laughs> yes, something like that. Anyways, uh, finally, uh, well, not quite finally. I've got two more good stories. <laughs> Tesla, uh, Elon Musk made the announcement today. Uh, they uh, they basically approved the merger with Solar City, uh, and I voted to approve that as well. So, uh, but uh, he basically is saying that he will he's going to be able to build a solar roof for the less than a regular roof. That's great. Now, that, this isn't even with the discounts, and because that's normally the bullshit way that they would sell you on this stuff. Oh, it'll well, it'll cost less over twenty years. No, out of the gate, it's going to cost less because there's so many problems with the current roofing supply chain. Interesting. Yep. So I know I know oh, many yeah. friends who don't want to get their roof done because it is so redonkulously expensive. Yes, it's insanely expensive. So now you'll be able to have a complete solar roof for less less price. And basically then you're off the grid as far as electricity goes. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm all and, for that. Go Elon. Yep, go Elon. And speaking of off the grid, the EM drive. Uh, this is the one where they still can't quite figure out how it works, but they say we it don't works. don't know how it works, <laughs> but they're saying it actually works. It is official that it works. There is a paper, a peer-reviewed paper on the EM drive that was accepted for publication in the Journal of Propulsion and Power and is now up and available for anyone to read on the internet. We have the link in our show notes. Um, yeah, the EM drive is controversial because it appears to produce a reaction without the need for any action, violating Newton's third law of dynamics. Ooh. Take that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I would like to have Neil deGrasse Tyson explain this shit to me because nobody can seem to really explain it. Well, it's since a, he's just a talking head, he probably doesn't know how the fuck it works either. He's an astrophysicist, not a physicist. Well, whatever. Somebody's <laughs> got to explain this stuff because it seems like magic. Spooky. <laughs> it works. Anyway, it's out there. It works. We have a drive that basically just produces propulsion from oh. nowhere. Okay. I'd like my ass. <laughs> This episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is brought to you by 1Password. 1Password is the very best password manager on the market today. And like the name suggests, you only need to remember 1Password to get access to all of your login credentials, secure notes, software licenses, credit cards, bank accounts, the list goes on and on. I've been using 1Password since 2009 and their new services at 1Password.com are the next evolution and I'm extremely excited to be sharing those with you today. Since you listen to this show, you know by now that you should never reuse a password for anything online. Just because a website is secure today, that doesn't mean your data will remain safe forever. And reusing passwords is one of the easiest ways to have your data and identity pilfered by those evil cyber hooligans. 1Password solves that problem, and now with 1Password.com, you can keep all of your information secure and synced across all of your devices and computers with no annoying configuration. Just sign in with your account and it syncs. Presto! Head over to OnePassword.com and choose the type of account that works best for you. Are you a lone wolf like myself? Or are you a family man like Brian? Are you a business person who has a team of employees? Well, you're in luck, because OnePassword.com has accounts for every type of user. OnePassword families and OnePassword teams include secure sharing of your data using shareable vaults within the family or team. 
OnePassword teams offer advanced admin tools and access controls because Janet from HR really doesn't need root on the Gibson. Once you sign up, you can install the OnePassword apps on as many computers and devices as you own. Whether at home or at work, you get free updates to all the apps for the lifetime of your account. With a digital wallet, you can securely store your credit cards, receipts, and more, and access them on any device. Save and fill out passwords, credit cards, and addresses into web pages with a single click. And with 1Password Watchtower, you receive around-the-clock security alerts for the services and sites that you use. Use tools like Security Audit to find duplicate and weak passwords and improve them with the Strong Password Generator. Helpful, friendly, one-on-one support from AgileBits employees whenever you need it. And everything is secured using strong AES-256 encryption. So head over to OnePassword.com today and get yourself secure. And thank you to AgileBits for sponsoring Grumpy Old Geeks. Security? Ha! And we're back this week with Mr. Dave Bittner from the CyberWire. How are you, Dave? I'm um, pretty good, pretty good. Had a nice break over Thanksgiving. Hope it was uh, nice and restful for both of you guys. It was nice to be back. <laughs> Family, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I did a, a six-hour flight for the first time with a three-month-old. Totally relaxed. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, yes. my. <laughs> Benadryl is your friend when it comes to that. Robitussin. Dope, dope that child up. Or, yeah, anything. <laughs> Give it to Tussin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we. I. you know, I've been there, my friend. I've been there. Yeah, well, we survived. So here we are <laughs> sitting uh, in a basement in Toronto. So let's let's roll. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what you got for us, Dave? <laughs> well, a couple of things have happened in the time we've been away. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Mirai botnet, mm-hmm. the big bad Mirai botnet. Well, it's back. And yes. uh, this time it has uh, it has knocked about 900,000 Germans offline, uh, about uh, that many customers of Germans uh, ISP Deutsche Telekom got knocked off this week after their routers got infected by a new variant of the Mirai botnet. Now nine, we know the, nine internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we know Mirai, of course, it's famous for infecting uh, cameras and DVRs and so forth. But uh, turns out there's a new variant out there that looks for a vulnerability in some of the routers that the ISPs use. Like um, no password? And, well, <laughs> it, it's interesting. I mean, this one is, um, it's looking for a vulnerability that allow basically allows the routers to be remotely updated, which you would think would, is a good thing. But um, the uh, the ISPs leave this uh, leave this port open, and the botnet looks for it and uh, exploits the vulnerability, and then it disables the ability for it to be updated remotely. Well, that's a bug. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're the botnet, it's a feature because uh, <laughs> it allows them to, uh, you know, cha- change the get in there, do what they need to do, and then prevent the ISPs from remotely updating or you know remotely fixing it. And they close um, the door behind so, them. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, cl- pretty clever. Um, it's interesting in the story that we've uh, posted here from Krebs on Security that. Um, some of the devices that weren't even uh, vulnerable to this are being affected by it because they're being they're being hit by so many scans on port seventy five forty seven, which is where the this uh, variant goes looking for its way to get into these uh, routers. They're getting hit with so many scans of that ports that just the scanning alone is bringing the routers to their knees. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. You know, this is it, it's continuing, and you know, again, people are this this bonnet is evolving it's also becoming more sophisticated and it looks as though the people who are building it are becoming more professional with it um you know investing in uh in server infrastructure to be able to command and control the botnets you know before they go out and uh, sell them to people who want to use them for bad things so uh, hold on to your hats uh, <laughs> hold on to the bar because uh, this one is uh probably not going away anytime soon so I've, I've got a little follow-up because I got my IP camera system online this week. Oh, oh, excellent. Yes, How's it for, going? Well, first thing I did was upgrade the firmware twice. <laughs> and, I, okay. and I've checked it multiple times and there was, you know, a couple different updates. So my, my firmware's updated. Yes, I changed the admin password <laughs> and I did one better. I deleted the admin account and created a new super user account with a crazy name that is probably uh, unguessable uh, to oh. anything What's but name, a massive Jason? brute force attack. I think it's Bam Bam. That's just, just yeah, tell my us, guess. Tell us what it is. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's Brian Bite Me, I think, is uh, the name of my admin user account. 
<laughs> so, <Yeah>. but uh, <laughs> at this point, I've got I got this crazy router from China that lets me just watch all of the traffic in real time. So, I've got I my don't know cable. What could- Hmm? What could possibly go wrong with a crazy router from China, Brian? <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. I'm sure it's perfectly fine, so carry on. Yes, I, I do have to use Google Translate on the admin screen to figure out what oh, what's where. No, no problems there whatsoever. <laughs> no, but it is a sub-network off of my main uh, cable modem, so I have that plugged into my main cable modem, so it is segmented off of that, and then uh, I can actually watch the traffic to the cameras. So there should be no traffic to the cameras unless I am out with my iPhone app looking back at my house. And so far, nobody's been pinging the uh, the cameras. So, so far, so good. <laughs> I have to say, though, um, if you're going to buy a home security system, probably spend a little more than I did. This was an experiment to see how those $200 systems on Amazon work. Yeah. They're crap. <laughs> they really are now, crappy. What, is, it the, is it the image quality that's bad or what? Well, the software is crappy. Um, yeah. it, it is one of the worst interfaces. I don't have it. You can't plug a keyboard into it. You can only do it with mouse and clicking yeah. the, the on-screen keyboard to type in passwords and things like that. Um, the image quality is okay, but the, uh, the depth of, or, uh, the depth of angle on the cameras is very narrow. They're not very wide angle. So like my oh, nest, really? my hmm. nest covers most of the room. And then I have yeah. one of those cameras right next to it. And it's about 40% of the field of view of the nest camera. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if you could get one of those little, have you seen those little adhesive wide angle adapters that can go on the back of an iPhone? Yeah. I wonder yeah. if one of those would uh, do anything for I you. I don't think so because they're weatherproofed and the actual first uh, element of the lens is about like a, no, a good half inch back from the protective right. covering. So it just wouldn't work. But uh, yeah. for huh. 200 bucks, you know, I can I, I can log into my house and see if I left the garage door open. That's really right. all I care about. <laughs> Good enough. Good and enough. I, and, right. But I just had to let you guys know, yes, I changed the admin password. And yes, I updated the firmware. So All right. And you, you busted you my balls last up. time. Well, it, yeah, but you hosed it all up to some crazy Chinese router. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let the busting continue. Okay. Uh, well, maybe right, you'll get one in on. your stocking this year, Mister Bittner, just for shits That's and right. giggles. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. The uh, uh, another b- big story this week was um, the San Francisco Municipal Railway, the Muni, uh, yes. got hit by a ransomware attack. Couldn't happen and, to nicer um, people. <laughs> you know, I've uh, not having ever lived in San Francisco, but it's a town I love to visit. Uh, it's an interesting story. Um, so they got hit by ransomware. This is actually sort of a happy ending. If you're going to have a happy ending for ransomware, this is a good one. They got hit by ransomware. Um, they made the decision to just make the system free while <laughs> while all the systems were down. Um, it basically, you know, was attacking the uh, the ticketing and turnstile, you know, parts of the system. Also, the, the didn't it attack the payroll? Because I heard from some union employees that they didn't even know if they were going to get paid this month. Oh, is that right? I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure on that detail. Um, yeah, people but, were very uh, upset that they were not going to be able to go Christmas shopping for their Chinese routers because they weren't going to have a <laughs> paycheck. I think that's reasonable. However, um, so so that was the way that they handled the sort of disruption of service is just by opening the gates and letting people ride. So, you know, I think that's a reasonable, good way to handle that. Uh, but uh, they had recent uh, robust backups. And so they were able to go to their backups and restore. And uh, so far, so good. They're They're running... Uh, normally. So, you know, that's the way it's supposed to work. If you, if you do get now, of course, it'd be better if they hadn't got hit at all. But uh, if you're going to get hit, um, it just, you know, that's the thing we say over and over on our show is you please back up. This is the best thing you can do in response to a ransomware, have recent backups. Back it up, back um, it up, and, back and it they up. Did. <laughs> yeah, they did. So yeah, and I, I, I agree. I think they handled it exactly right. You know, didn't didn't disrupt service for anyone. And next thing you knew, they were back up and running normally. So well done. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you know, and this is good because they are in San Francisco, the land of the, the technology startup. So hopefully they got some, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, little 15 year olds that got fired from their their startup. They couldn't get funding and decided to go work for Muni so they could get their artisanal coffee. And they they they. <laughs> Preach the backup mantra to them. Yeah, it's a good thing you're not judgmental. <laughs> oh, me? No, <laughs> Have you heard our show? <laughs> I'm familiar with it. Uh, so I wanted to wrap up this week by talking about um, uh, sort of uh, what we call insider threats. 
And uh, there was a big thing. I'll give you a little background here. This week was a deadline for uh, defense contractors, people who have um, facilities that have security clearances. They had to do something called self-certifying that they had an insider threat program in place. Now, when you hear the word insider threat, you probably think of you know the the, the bad guy who's going around and trying to steal everything from inside your business, the spy, that sort of thing, the the mole inside your your organization. And that is part of an insider threat. But insider threats are also characterized as just people who uh, make mistakes. You know, that employee who accidentally clicks on that email that then allows the ransomware. (laughs) Yeah, right. Exactly. That's considered an insider threat as well. Um, but, uh, we, we were, <laughs> we were talking here about, um, this, this, uh, this deadline where we thought it was interesting that these organizations have to self-certify that they have an insider threat program in place. Um, and this covers all the usual bases, uh, with, uh, with clearances, you know, allegiance to the U S, uh, uh, sexual behavior, personal conduct, financial considerations, alcohol or drug use, emotional or personality disorders, grabbing him conduct. by the pussy. That would probably be in there, too. Uh, Misuse of IT systems. Now, you know, none of this is new, which makes us wonder, you know, what's been going on all these years and what saying you're going to do this is going to make a big difference. Um, You know, there's there's a funny historical uh, story about this. There was a uh, there was a spy, one of the worst spies that the uh, U.S. has ever had. His name was Robert Hansen. Um, I was going to say, is he worse than that? He was a bad spy or worse than that? He was a good spy. No, he was a good spy, but bad for us. Uh, he did a whole lot of damage. Um, but, it, you know, interestingly, um, 10 years before he was busted, his brother-in-law, who also worked for the FBI, went to uh, his boss, the brother-in-law's boss, and said, I think you should investigate my brother-in-law for espionage because our sister saw a big pile of cash uh, in his house. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a dresser, and also uh, he uh, has mentioned. Way he has up, mentioned uh, way up on the yeah. list of giveaways. There. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well there's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> right, but that also that he had mentioned that uh, he wanted to retire to Poland, um, <laughs> and this was when Poland was still under the control of of the, of the Soviets. So, um, ten years went by before the FBI, uh, you know, caught on and and actually busted this guy. And that's a long time and a lot of secrets. And people actually died because of this guy. So um, there was a movie about him, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. But uh, moving on from that, uh, just this week, uh, Germany's domestic intelligence service, which is called the BFV, uh, which is an abbreviation of a long German word that I cannot pronounce. um, They arrested one of their own uh, on charges of being an ISIS mole. (laughs) Uh, And... uh, the guy was not only a big frequenter of jihadist chat sites, but he'd also enjoyed an earlier pre, pre-BFV career as, wait for it, a gay porn star. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. I don't know how that didn't come up in the background check. <laughs> way to vet your spies, Germany. <laughs> now, on the other hand, I think it's fair to say that the Germans are a little more liberal when it comes to their relationship with pornography than we are here in the United States. So... I've heard such things. I friends have told me that, uh, <laughs> but uh, so perhaps that had something to do with it. Um, but uh, boy, talk about your insider threat. He's a yeah, <laughs> he's a turncoat. You know, uh, well, he's a triple threat. Pure... He's gay porn, secret Islamist, and probably a waiter on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So, but you it's know, funny just how the... thinking thinking straight up. I mean, a gay porn star. Does not lead to ISIS. I don't connect those dots. That's well, true. That's, that's what makes yeah. it even weirder. Yeah, and the, the German officials are basically saying there is no way we could have, you know, we, within a million years, we never would have guessed this. Uh, you know, uh, the, not the once did he wear one of those outfits correct. in his movies. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, we've you watched know, them it, all. <laughs> he seems to have been. Uh, yeah. I, it's uh, he was showing he was showing up. They, they caught him because he was showing up in um, in ISIS chat rooms and um, which the Germans were monitoring. And uh, they led him away to a to sort of do a one on one chat. And that's how they eventually ended up um, ended up busting him. So any guesses on his chat name? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we would leave it up to our listeners, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come up with a good, that'd be a good one. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you know, beware the insider threat. History is littered with the, uh, 
the uh, poorly dressed carcasses of uh, of bad insider threats. And, uh, <laughs> History is littered with the used condoms <laughs> of gay porn actors. <laughs> yeah, so um, it, you know, it's it's worth shining a light on just just for people to be aware of it for their own their own uh, purposes is something we talk about a lot because it's such a big deal. You know, how many times is these things? It's the humans who make the mistakes. It's the person clicking on the malware. Um, it's that insider threat that. It's so hard to defend against. So um, it's, it's that you know, these stories are funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These stories are funny, but uh, it's it's something that you should really take uh, seriously. Well, all right. Thank you for uh, <laughs> making us not trust anybody that we work with now. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're back in the saddle, Dave. It's been a while yeah, since you've had a good I'm, one like that. <laughs> I'm well rested and tan. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> now the next right. thing Funny you have to- that was the title of one of the movies he was in. <laughs> well rested and tan yeah, yeah i like it i like it all right fellas okay Dave, we'll talk to you next week right, go uh, go have a good one bye all right, all right. at the library well since brian didn't decide to read anything over the break i did and uh <laughs> i read a lot <laughs> So the first book that I actually read and with my new downtime, because my, my attention is back, on my Kindle, I read Normal, a novel by Will uh, Warren Ellis. Mm-hmm. You actually read it. That's fine. I actually read now. it. Yep. Fortunately, they were, you know, they were like Kindle individual books, so it, they were very short. Amazing book. You will love it. Brian, you will love this book. It's, okay. uh, it's about an insane asylum where futurists are sent off to. <laughs> After like they I've, after they go crazy, it's beautiful. I feel like I've read something by Warren Ellis before. I've read I, well. I've reviewed the Gun Machine on this show before, and he's you okay. know he's a, he's generally uh, he he does a lot of comics, right? But yeah, I did review Gun Machine, which I thought was a great book. Uh, I, I I think I gave that a four star. It was I mean it was it was good, but yeah, I I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but cool. this one this one was right up there with uh, William Gibson. This was William Gibson esque with the. The beauty of the language and how he describes things. It was it was a fantastic book. I cannot recommend this enough. It's out on paperback now, or you can still go get, I think, the Kindle individuals. It's broken into four parts. And cool. uh, I really, really wish that uh, this would be a, a world that he explores more. Next book, which is also probably up your alley, just from the title, <laughs> The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark I Manson. Write, I could write that fucking thing. I think you should. I think you should because you know what? This is uh, this is kind of a bait and switch. So he starts off by you know telling you how to not give a fuck about anything and how you'll be much happier, which you know is pretty much true. But then he goes into the part where he says, "Well, you can't really not give a fuck about everything." And I'm just like, "God damn it! I want to give a f- not give a fuck about anything." Well, here here's why I don't give a fuck about this book. I'm reading the first sentence of the of the promo crap, which we might have to steal for our podcast. In this generation defining self-help guide, a superstar blogger cuts through the crap. This book d- devolves r- fairly rapidly after like chapter three or four into general self-help bullshit. And that really was a was a bummer for me. So it's mostly about giving a fuck. No, it, it, there's a lot of th- a lot of stuff. A lot of, giving a, a, lot fuck. Of, a lot of fucks are given. Uh, I love that we just did this segment because I unconsciously kind of before the podcast started going, I'm going to try to go this whole episode and just do it clean without cussing once. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you, I think you broke that in the security segment anyway, by the way. So you're right. okay. <laughs> uh, my next book is We Are Legion. We Are Bob by Dennis Taylor. Now, you got the title. The, the, the title right there, anything that has Bob in the title, because Bob Fogarty is our, our VO guy and my best friend for 25 years, and I, anything that has Bob in it, I go for. And Does does, does Legion happen to be my uncle? No. Oh, okay. Because uh, I was just doing the math on it. If we, are, if we are Legion and we are Bob, then therefore Legion is my uncle. This is the, the first book in the Bobverse series. <laughs> And it what it what it what it kind of boils down to is you know the world is at its end and everybody's having there are all these factions across the world. It's like 150 years after current time, and the U.S. is gone. We've got you know fundamental Christians running the world. You got the Brazilians who are the the badasses. You got the Chinese, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to send out this probe into the universe to replicate itself 
and you know colonize the universe for them and <laughs> fortunately the uh, the christians are the ones that send out this guy named bob <laughs> <laughs> and uh he's not christian he's a he's pretty much an atheist but he's out there it, it this is kind of like the martian with the problem solving but it's also like chris moore with the funny oh, and cool. i was cracking up like ha- like most of this book i was just i was i had tears running down my face because it's really funny but then he's like solving these real problems because he is a computer you know basically he's a guy that died they put his brain into a computer and then sent it off into the stars so he can like tweak his time dilation. He's like, okay, you know, one second could be a year for him and he can figure out all these problems. And it's, it's a really cool book. It's a really great concept. I highly recommend this book. This is my, awesome. my big recommendation for the week and uh, new author that I hadn't heard of. And I got this from an audible recommendation. Very cool. Yeah. So definitely uh, if you get a chance, check out the audio audio book that I sent you, Brian, because I think you're really going to like it. I will try to do so this week. So my last recommendation for the week is Tools of Titans by a friend of the show, Tim Ferriss. I got my copy of it, uh, my pre-release copy with uh, the special uh, dedication to me. And fortunately, I turned to the back of the book and there I am thanked in the credits for helping Tim be a podcaster. So, of course, I have to give Tim a shout out. And uh, I've read about 150 pages pages of this book. And I think I've got about 15 pages of notes already because it is so good at distilling all of the knowledge from all the podcasts that he's done so far. It's really well done and I can't recommend it enough. Go, go, go pre-order it. If you're into that, that self-helpy kind of thing, but there are really solid tips in this one, like actual good business tips and health tips. I'm digging it. Awesome. You know, I like Tim Ferriss. He's a good guy, but uh, I'm over the self-help thing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This isn't the self-help thing. This is like just tips and tricks that all these people like he distilled down the good stuff for you don't have to listen to a three hour podcast you can read three pages of notes right so um it's good stuff it's really good stuff i especially like the uh derek sivers stuff because derek is just awesome at not no bullshit good good guy software apps and gadgets remember those uh doppler labs here here one buds that we uh we got a cop or copy of we got an advanced uh, version <laughs> of and i gave them a go and couldn't figure out what the hell they're actually for those are the ones that let you like uh change different tones See, if, I, and if stuff. I can remember the 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 uh pr bull crappery that surrounded it it was you could immerse yourself into your own hearing universe and create a custom customized uh, audio environment around you or something. right so. and, and i think we joked about did, did they come with a, a couple tabs of ecstasy so you could really get into it <laughs> yeah they, something like that and you know i i tried them out and i just really couldn't figure out what the hell was the point and they did the big you know push last year where, where they you know tried to do something with coachella uh now yeah, that was it to, yeah <laughs> yeah and now they're out there trying to make partnerships with sports teams for again i don't understand the business model or how these things are even supposed to work or <laughs> why anybody would use them and apparently they're coming around to that realization too they're not shipping oh there you go yeah they were supposed to ship in june then they got pushed to november and now they've been pushed to february while they try to figure out what's going to go because you as they state we can only launch this product once we want here one to be perceived as a game changer and we know it can be once we figure out what the fuck people are supposed to do with these damn things. I believe that, ch- that train has <laughs> left the station, Doppler friends. Yeah, I... it's cool tech. Like I said at the time, it's interesting, but nobody needs these things for anything. No, what they need is nor- what they need are general noise canceling headphones. So you can just not hear most of the shit that's out there, not make it sound cooler. That's all yeah. I care about. <laughs> Now, you build me some headphones with some red hot chili pepper canceling fe- abilities. Boom, yes. I'm in. <laughs> the anti nickel back earbuds were in. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, so I found a new site called Brain.fm. Mm-hmm. It's music designed for the brain to enhance focus, relaxation, meditation, naps, uh, and, and all this good stuff. And it's supposed to work within 10 to 15 minutes of listening to these songs. Let um, me guess. It's ambient. It is ambient. And boom. This is going to make you feel good. Mm-hmm. Who who makes the music? We've invented an AI engine AI. that composes all the music. The AI has the brain of a neuroscientist and the heart of a musician. 
No, it fucking doesn't. Here's the deal. It's I like it. I've been I've been using it for a couple days. I got uh, I got a free sign up from uh, a friend of the show, Jordan Harbinger, who met uh, one of the founders at a conference and gave us a. I got a free lifetime subscription. So boo on that. Yeah, boy. Um, I really like it. The uh, the focus soundtrack that they have for working. I I like it. I don't know if it. I have not done a scientific study to find out if I am more focused. But I do well, find okay, that it's actually off, pretty good. Let me, let me tell them right now, if they happen to be listening, I would back away from any of these claims about enhancing focus or relaxation or meditation or naps or or brain productivity. Because remember what happened to the Lumosity people? It's unquantifiable. <laughs> and there are things called class action lawsuits. Yes. So we don't want to go the way of Lumosity. So back away from that. Make it sound, you know, it just sounds nice. It's nice music that is kind of relaxing. You're fine with that. So I would, you know, tone down your stuff a little bit here. Yeah, tone down uh, the rhetoric get, and uh... get sued. Um, and secondly, uh, Moby's Ambient, uh, Aphex Twin Selected Ambient Works Volume 1 and Volume 2. Brian Eno's music for airports or other. I, I can give you a list of albums that you can just put on that weren't done by, you know, an AI with the brain of a neuroscientist and the heart of a musician they were done by actual musicians and if you purchase them they will actually make some money which they deserve for it that's true too um but i i I gotta say though for what it is i like it i enjoy i I actually enjoy listening to it um it's in beta right now we'll see if they go to go to market but for the most part did you ever get like one of those 200 hundred dollar keyboards like for a christmas gift or something like back in the day so like you could learn to play piano they were like super huge in the 90s and like maybe late 80s oh the old casio Uh, keyboards yeah this is just like the equivalent of having an ambient button instead of roomba oh kind of yeah no i've got a 600 hundred dollar keyboard in the other room that my brother uh loaned me so i can learn to play piano (laughs) there you go uh, which I've been working on, actually. Uh, that'll be in a, in a couple weeks. We'll have a, we'll have the music show where uh, Jason will give us a recital. I will. I will. I will play uh, for for Elsie for you. <laughs> anyway, moving back to the gadget side of things, I found this one right before we went to air: a Back to the Future flux capacitor wall charger. Very cute. I like this thing. I like this thing a lot. It's on sale for twenty bucks. It is. They they obviously or not obviously they have a flux capacitor keychain that they already sell on ThinkGeek, and mm-hmm. what somebody said was like, oh, they took the um they took the keychain and put a plug on it, <laughs> so which is kind of what it is. But uh, the only downside of it is that it blocks the other outlet in the wall. That is a problem. Um, yeah, it is kind of a problem if you're uh, low on space, but if you're not, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I like I like me some <laughs> flux capacitor love. <laughs> This sucker's electrical. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> and uh, finally, Tiny Wings, one of my mm-hmm. favorite apps of all time, uh, has finally gotten an update. It was originally originally released in 2011, and this is the third update to the app. Wow, there's been like 75 different versions of Firefox since then. Exactly. Um, I stopped playing Tiny Wings because I beat it. Three years ago, Tiny Wings people, you know what they did? They made all the monies and they just fucked off to Belize and uh, had tiny mojitos for the last couple of years. And now they're like, oh, we're out of mojitos. We better go do an update. And we they're had back. drinks with tiny bubbles. Tiny bubbles. Um, and they have an Apple TV version of the game that you can buy for $2.99. <laughs> Media Candy. Millennials the Musical is a thing. It is. Did you watch it? I did. What'd you think? I thought it was clever, but it also uh, solidified that I hate musicals. I knew you were going to say that. Um, I like. I couldn't, mu- I, I couldn't stand it. I really couldn't. I like musicals, and I couldn't stand it, but I was still chuckling the entire time because it was it was taking the piss out of musicals. So, uh, I, it, I mean, it was right on. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is exactly this is what satire is, and they nailed it for that. But I can't stand musicals. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Grand Tour real quick. I love it. It's it's Top Gear without yeah. all the without all the crappy bits. I, I, I there's some bits that go a little bit long, like the the uh, the celebrity bits but they go shorter than having the actual celebrity which is was my least favorite part of the show i i, I like that bit and i you know i miss the stig obviously but 
at the end of the day, this perfectly illustrates how much chemistry matters. Uh, just having those three up on screen again, that's all I needed. It, it's a great show. Yep, absolutely. I, I, I'm in, and fortunately, they've been releasing them early, so hopefully if I when we're done with the show, I can go downstairs and maybe the new one will be on. Yeah, they've been dropping them on Thursdays in the U.S. while most other places are getting it on Friday. So I am I've actually only seen the first one and half of the second one. So I'm uh, thank God I have my uh, my VPN because I can basically dial in from the U.S. and I will be able to get it tonight. There you go. Grumpyoldgeeks.com slash VPN if you want to get shows early. There you go. It's a you need it if you're traveling internationally these days. And speaking of which, I have my uh, latest update of drunken airplane reviews, except for the fact that I flew with my three month old child. So I was not drunk. <laughs> OK, <laughs> which was a shame because I watched absolutely fabulous the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to watch that again with a buzz. Uh, it was great. <laughs> I really did enjoy it. I forgot because I haven't watched the the series itself for so long how mean the jokes are and how angry that show is. And it was great. <laughs> it was fantastic. I I really really did enjoy it. So um you know I I can't recommend it enough. And I definitely want to sort out some night to have a couple cocktails and watch that again. There you go. Um, I watched Ghostbusters the reboot with the ladies. And and okay, what's your verdict? <laughs> it didn't need to happen yep there you go all right we're on we're on the same page with that one <laughs> they were funny they were fine i would have you know a brand new movie with with the four of them together i thought they had good chemistry the fact that they made it a a reboot of of something that was perfect to begin with was unnecessary absolutely unnecessary and the jokes were flat no it was nothing yep. good about yeah, that it was movie. it was forced it was it was forced into a conceit that they didn't really fit into yep so. and i don't care what anybody says about the whole like you know, female thing being ghost didn't care about that at all. The joke no. sucked. The joke yeah, sucked. Who cares about the female thing? I mean, we've you know, we had bridesmaids. That was a hilarious movie. I still, uh, I, I've, I've only gotten 10 minutes into that. I got to I got to try that again. It's unbelievably funny. And the four of them, again, like I said, they had great chemistry. The jokes failed because they tried to fit it into Ghostbusters and it just didn't work. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I watched Terminator Genesis. Why? Wasn't that bad? All right. amazingly enough it wasn't that because everybody had said it was the worst movie ever made in the history of man uh <laughs> like arnold schwarzenegger took a dump and wiped it on a checkbook and then got a movie deal you know but no it was okay it was it, it, it was not worse than terminator 3 so the way i rank it is terminator uh, 2 the best movie wow that's really not saying much. That's what I, I'm saying you know, here. I'm never going to go back and watch Terminator 3, so why would I go back and watch this crap? Well, I, I would I would never say go watch it, but I'm okay. saying it's not it's not as bad as everybody said. So Terminator 2, best one. Terminator 1, second. Terminator Genesis, third. The rest sure. of them, underneath. So All right. the Chris Hardwick Terminator 3 is one that you can definitely never waste your two hours of your life on. I agree. And this this last movie review, uh, Batman versus Superman. We both watched it. What's your take? Uh, I watched it. Uh, I was severely buzzed when I saw it, and I found it to be somewhat enjoyable. Here's the deal. I did too. <laughs> I was I was a little bit buzzed when I watched it. And the thing that I I didn't even think about this until the movie was over. Um, I had been on one of those guys that was just like Ben, I, I ben Affleck is Batman. What the fuck are you go. talking about? And by the end of it, I'm like. Ben Affleck was a pretty good Batman. Ah, <laughs> uh, that actually he still but he still bothered me. It, it took me out of it because I hate Ben Affleck so much. Mm. <laughs> it, it 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 tweaked me the entire movie. Hey, and at least it was, wasn't Matt David. That's true. It wasn't Matt. <laughs> I, God, I want him to play Robin in the next one. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh, good bat hunting. There we go. That's the sequel. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> Otherwise, I thought it, I, it was it was stupid. It was hokey. Oh, yeah. And ridiculous. and Superman is a twat in this. I don't like the new Superman. I like the previous Superman where they only did one movie and then cut the series and rebooted it again. But uh, this guy I don't like. I liked Batman's take on the fact because when I watched the last Superman movie, I'm like, Superman's a dick. How many thousands of people is he killing by destroying the city? And Batman at least agreed with me. He was the only person that agreed with me. So maybe that's why I liked Ben Affleck as right. Batman, because he agreed with me. Well, there you go. You okay. like anybody that agrees with you. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I like my sycophants. Uh, Glitch. <laughs> 
is a show on Netflix from Australia, which is kind of a zombie movie, but kind of not. It's a six-part series that I absolutely enjoyed. Um, okay. it, it is bizarre. It is completely bizarre. People come back from the dead from, you know, hundreds of years old to, you know, just a couple years old, but they come back in perfect shape, don't know how they got there. And, of course, there's a major conglomerate that has chemistry and chemicals and stuff, whatever. Um right. That that's not the whole point of it. Great acting, great character development. Seriously enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Cool. Next one, The Fall, which you know has our girl from the X Files in it. Um, yep. Uh, season three was a shit show. It was one of the most excruciating things I've ever had to sit through. Uh, oh dear. Season one and two, I really enjoyed. Season three is a really terrible version of a courtroom drama. It was. No. It's completely skippable. Do not watch it. If you watch season one and two, just leave it at that. Don't waste <laughs> your time, honestly. Is it coming back for more? No, it's done. Oh, that's it? Okay. Well, it might come back with a different uh, case, but that case is now closed. Gotcha. I'll leave it at that. Um, White Rabbit Project now has its official trailer out. Uh, I know that you are looking forward to this. I'm kind of looking forward to it a little bit more after the trailer. But yeah, I mean, I was neither here nor there because I didn't know what it was going to be, really. Um, and even the trailer doesn't. There's a huge conceit call, calling it the White Rabbit Project that they don't bother to do, even explain it all in the trailer, which I thought was strange. Well, they uh, do. They, Tori says we're going down the rabbit hole on this one. Yeah, I mean, that's a one throwaway, but they could actually have built something around the title for the trailer. Don't that, you think? They did. That's it. <laughs> that, yeah. these, these people aren't really good at like, you know, dialogue and story. Yeah. They make anyway, shit go uh, boom. <laughs> I am looking forward to it because I can't explain how much I myth. I miss Mythbusters. You um, myth, myth, I myth, myth, I, I myth, 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 myth a lot. So, <laughs> so I'm very excited to have these guys back and doing a show together. And it'll, you know, it's not going to be as sciency. They're obviously going for bigger bang and bigger ratings, but I liked the, I liked all three of them as people on the show. I'm happy that they have their own show. I'm sure it's going to be acceptable. Yeah, just go get a Tested.com account and watch Adam do his thing over there, if that's all you care yeah, about. Yeah, see, I, Adam by himself doesn't do it for me. It's the, Again, it comes back to that chemistry thing. Like, Adam and Jamie together, fantastic. You have to Adam have a lot of hate, which is why this show works. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. What else you got? <laughs> we got some news about Netflix. Netflix has finally decided to allow you to download movies so you can watch them offline. So you can actually watch things from Netflix on your flights these days. Um, it has one drawback. Okay. They have done what I hate, which my cable provider has done, and everybody is starting to do with their goddamn apps. You cannot make any of the locally saved content that you now save with Netflix playable via AirPlay or Chromecast. You have to watch it on the device that you downloaded it on. You cannot toss it to your TV. Okay, and you know why they do that, right? Because I hate them. Because you can put a put a bridge in between and then record the movie, right? <laughs> yeah, there are ways around it anyways. It's exactly. <laughs> Jesus, you fucking I mean, I've morons. Been this, I've been having this argument with the music industry for 20 years. I'm like, you cannot stop people from making a copy. If it can all. play through a computer speaker, we can save it. Yes. Uh, yes. So what I'm going to do is I, I have a new piece of software. Um, I got the updated version of ScreenFlow, uh, mm -hmm. which lets you actually do screen caps of your iOS devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this new Netflix app, and I'm going to see if they are smart enough to disable screen viewing on ScreenFlow. So next week I'll have a uh, I'll have an update on that because if I can capture a movie from the Netflix app on ScreenFlow, their entire point is moot and they should just shove it and go home. I agree. It's the dumbest thing ever. We're paying for it already anyways. You want me to this again, this just drives people to Sweden. Moron of the week. Brian, are you a Madonna fan? Uh, get into the groove good song you know there's, there's some good stuff uh nothing in probably the last 20 years okay that's it that, <laughs> you know you know like a virgin back in the day when she was wearing the mesh shirt and all that uh, yeah, I was, I was in. Had hmm? good run in the 80s so yeah, she had a great run in the 80s but uh nowadays uh, so she is going to have a concert in miami mm -hmm. uh each ticket five thousand dollars a pop and she's going to do the entire concert dressed as a clown. This is, uh, please tell me it's a benefit for something. It is a benefit. No, okay. it's definitely all a benefit. Right. You know what? I will forgive almost all sins for that. Uh, it's for her <laughs> nonprofit organization, Raising Malawi. Uh, James Corden will be the host of the gala, uh, which Fine. will have a, you know, a, uh, 
an auction at the end to raise money. Uh, but base base ticket is five thousand dollars, and she's going to dress up as a clown. Oh, Sean Penn's going to be there. I wonder how they're getting along these days. <laughs> well, I hope I hope she doesn't come out as a paparazzi clown. That would be <laughs> awkward. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's a charity. Fine. Stupid, but fine. Uh, speaking of <laughs> awkward, Spotify has outed their listeners embarrassing listening habits on billboards. Now, see, you put this in moron of the week and I love this. I think this is just terrible. You don't make fun of your clientele. They don't That's... call people out by name. They don't say anything about their username whatsoever. In fact, it could just be PR that these things are even real. They could have just been sitting in a room making this crap up. They don't call anyone out. This is totally fine. Well, okay, hackers of the world unite. Go find out who these people are that have listened to this, <laughs> and let's find out if they're real. Because if they're real, this is a breach of confidentiality and just decorum on, in I my part. I guarantee you it's not a breach of confidentiality because there's something in the terms of service in there that said they could totally do this uh, anyways I, I, they didn't call anybody out by the username it's totally fine and i i love every single one of these i think they're friggin hilarious they're hilarious i get that <laughs> i i'm totally down <laughs> they're, they're funny as hell the guy that listened to hamilton five thousand times yeah okay good yep. good on you mate but um the just the fact that they did that just makes me kind of like oh now I can't actually listen to that Debbie Gibson album because they might make fun of me on a billboard. Thank you, Spotify. <laughs> Not like I'm going to listen to a Debbie Gibson album, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's that's how that rolls. It's amazing how Debbie Gibson just came to mind. <laughs> I was stuck on Madonna from the '80s and clown. Yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> sure. That's that's so I see. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now she's Deborah Gibson, and she's still fine. So I'm I'm fine with that. You do that. Tiffany's, Tiffany's still pretty hot too. Ah oh, yes. Oh, let's go to the mall. <laughs> let's go to the mall. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is this is my moron of the week. Uh, this is a uh, whoever is running social media for Ad Age um, at age dot com. <laughs> this is their Twitter account. Sadly, um, now first off, there's there's two cool things in here. The dehydrated <laughs> vagina strikes again in Vagisil spot. I've actually watched that commercial. It is fucking insane. It's so, fucking uh, hilarious. It, it is really, really <laughs> funny. So that's worth the watch anyways. But sadly, uh, whoever was tweeting for Ad Age at the time. when I don't think this is sadly. I think this is amazing. <laughs> um, instead of putting an image from Vagisil, they pulled in a lovely <laughs> high quality photo of a McDonald's Big Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I think that was it was awesome. <laughs> um, the dry vagina it, and the Big Mac. <laughs> as soon as it had been pointed out, they then immediately tweeted, we realized the tweet about the Vagisil ad pulled in the wrong image. Enjoy the laugh at our expense. I, that's great. They they owned yeah. it. They owned they it. Owned it. They, they didn't try to pull it down. They owned it. So good on them. Yeah. And finally, moron of the universe, uh, Martin Shrelly. Shrelly. I still don't know how to say that dude's name. The shithead. Guy, it's Martin Shithead. Yeah, the shithead who bought the uh, drug company because he's a hedge fund manager, jacked up the price overnight from $13 to $750 a tablet, has been totally pwned by a bunch of students in Australia who have now created 3.7 grams of the actual drug that he is trying to sell for just $20, which is basically $2 per unit. Yes, so and it, yeah, the, it, it basically would sell between $35,000 and $110,000 in the U.S. So Yes, and then they just published how they put it together. So good luck. There you ah, go. Open source. So mm -hmm. in, in another segment, we would probably be saying that, oh, they're just ruining the lives of the drug company's employees, and now these people won't be able to make a living. But since this guy's a douchebag, we're going to go with being well, on see, the side would, of good and right. Yeah, that would only be if Deborah Gibson tried to release her album for $7 million. Fancy. It's Christmas time, so I'm getting hit up with ads left, right, and center everywhere I go on the internet, and I finally stumbled across something that I thought was really, really cool. Um, Honest Design by Ohio, O-H-H-I-O -H -H for some reason, at Ohio.me. Uh, these are these like kind of thick woven blanket. Now, I just saw the blanket in the ad, and I was like, that looks awesome and super comfortable and my wife would probably love this thing and you know wrap my child in it and have visions of domestic bliss uh then i went to the website uh, <laughs> and you saw the price <laughs> found out how expensive that they are and then i also saw how they decided to market these blankets 
with millennial bullshittery, like uh, the guy sitting around wrapped in it at his laptop at his, you know, minimalist desk in his house and the, you know, 22 year old fashion model out with her dog who are both looking pensively off into the distance wearing the blankets. You douchebags. <laughs> um, we value simplicity and believe that the goal of any good design is to eliminate unnecessary complication. With each of our creations, we strive to present unadorned beauty. Um, yeah. The the picture of the, I put the picture of the girl and the dog in there because this is some just bullshittery. <laughs> I, I agree. This is you know, look, it, it, just, it looks like a just, joke. If you just look at the blanket, and if it were like you know a hundred bucks instead of eight hundred, that'd be pretty damn nice. And they have they have the cat basket, which it probably costs about four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's a little insane. Again, it's one of those things where I was like, "Oh, look at that! I want to go get that." Click. Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> and this was this comes from Kickstarter. They had a forty thousand dollar goal, and they're at ninety thousand dollars for people yes. who uh, who really really want the chunky braids. And I did put a picture from uh, Zoolander in the notes that <laughs> uh, yes. I think I think really sums up what I think of this entire thing. You did a very good job there. Very funny. Um, so I also found somebody uh, that, you know, if you don't want to uh, listen to an AI that has the brain of a neuroscientist and the heart of a musician, you could just listen to what science has now said is the most relaxing song in the world, or at least neuroscientists. Um, they did a study where they basically listened to, had people listen to a bunch of songs, blah, blah, blah. What's relaxing? Surprisingly, Coldplay and Adele don't put people to sleep as much as something else does. <laughs> That's <It's> surprising. <laughs> I know. It's a song called Weightless by Marconi Union, which is an English ambient music band. Um, and it induced a 65% reduction in stress among participants in this particular study. 11% more effective than most other songs, including the aforementioned Coldplay. That uh, was not just a joke. In reducing blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing speed. It was done in, the song was written in 2011, created by the band, along with the British Academy of Sound Therapy, to do just that. Relaxed listeners. And um, it's in the show notes. Uh, it was gone from, go ahead, Jason. Yes, the video was gone due to... <gasps> copyright infringement from the article yes, so <laughs> the articles because they decided not to put in the embed for the official video um and uh, we have that in our show notes so you can listen to it there it is exactly as you know it, it does what it says on the tin it is it is a wonderful ambient music track i like it yep yep boner killer extraordinaire and there are drones in the video too so lots of lots of drones uh speaking of ambient music though I found the greatest site, I think, of all time. It's called You Are Listening to Los Angeles. What it does is takes ambient music and mm -hmm. then overlays the stream of the LAPD <laughs> police emergency radio. I'm almost positive we covered this in one of our first uh, podcasts. I cannot. If we did, that's great, because yeah. I, I don't remember ever seeing this. I had this on all day. This was one <laughs> of the greatest things, I think, ever. And I went to the... Uh, I, I went to air traffic control at uh, JFK, <laughs> and so I'm. And you can create your own stations. There is a way yeah. to you can put in your own SoundCloud stream or YouTube stream, and then pick whichever uh, band you want. Because I I tried to do uh, O'Hare because I wanted the O'Hare feed, but I'm just like, ah, planes are planes. Let's go JFK, <laughs> and it's 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 awesome. It's like you're yeah. listening to this beautiful music and then uh, go to runway nine or left and clear for takeoff and uh, hold for hold for uh, Pan Am 22 coming down for uh, runway L L2. <laughs> it's just like so bizarre. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's definitely worth a listen. It's it's a uh, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> Ah, Christmas time is here. The hipster nativity set, so the millennials can relate, is now out and available. Link is in the show notes. Uh, this also includes three wise men who arrive on segways bearing gifts for the Lord from Amazon. See, I have a problem with this because no hipster would ever be able to afford a segway. Well, that's uh, you're splitting hairs here. <laughs> First Next. off, you're talking about an immaculate conception from a millennial. <laughs> Well, the millennials don't have sex, so I guess that's the only way they're going to have, have children. Anyway. Oh, I didn't actually think about it. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> All that Tinder and no fucking. Anyways, uh, you can buy Twin Peaks Lego minifigures as well. Uh, this would be good for me for Christmas. But technically, because the, <laughs> because of copyright, uh, and they did not go get the rights to this, uh, they are actually referred to as, well, they're reordered and reused, reused and repurposed Legos. Uh, and the set is called the Double Mountain Murder Mystery Town. 
<laughs> okay, the double of, murder. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but this includes a log lady, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, pay, uh, pay for rights, people. It's much more funny. <laughs> it it really is. And, and my third thing, which I'm sure this guy also didn't pay for any rights, so we'll see how long these are available for. <laughs> uh, these are Christmas ornaments featuring Morrissey, David Bowie, Adam Ant, Nick Cave, Susie, and Robert Smith from The Cure. I love these things. Um, they, <laughs> Susie Sue is transformed into Cindy Lou Who, the little girl from Whoville. Oh, you know, you know uh, that, that I, I don't. The, the the musicians aren't going to go after these people. No, I have some I have some spot, history yeah. with the Dr. Seuss uh, <laughs> estate. My dad used to run the Dr. Uh, Seuss gallery here in Chicago. These yep. people are going to end up in Guantanamo. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot yeah. do well, this. The set is called a very new wave Christmas. That might be the only one that gets them in real trouble. Um, oh no, that's not true because we've got the uh, stop motion Rankin base uh, Morrissey, who is Snow Moz and Heat Moz. <laughs> And I thought you'd really appreciate Oingo Boingo frontman uh, Danny Elfman, who is Elf- <laughs> I just got Elf- to that <laughs> Elfman on the shelfman. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I should order I, these now before they're gone. I, yeah, if you're listening and you want these, get them and order them right away because they're not going to last too much longer. <laughs> Our first comment of the week comes from iTunes from B.B2XOP. <laughs> makes me title is makes me feel good about my tin hat. Great info, even though I don't always understand or agree with them. Well, maybe you don't agree with us because you don't understand. So no, I was actually you see, you're 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 taking a bat to the beep boop beep boop. No, I'm no, actually, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that maybe that's the reason. So you know, we, maybe yeah. we're not doing a good enough job of educating. I was actually going to praise him for being able to still give a five star and listen to a show when he doesn't necessarily agree with some of the points. I think that's the way it should be. No, I think this is a great comment and I really appreciate it. So uh, thank you very much. And now I will do my best to educate better. Okay. Uh, We got some comments coming in from grumpyoldgeeks.com as well. The first from Ivor Davies or Ivor. Probably Ivor. That's my guess. Uh, Is there any way I can give you non-monetary support without downloading iTunes? Every time I get to the download site, I am overwhelmed with the appleness of it all, and I am almost physically sick. Great podcast, guys. You really bring meaning to my meaningless existence. Um, Yeah, I get it. Uh, We don't, you know, we love your money. We, We want your money if you want to give it to us. If you don't, the absolute best way is tell a friend. Just get people that you think would like the podcast listening to it uh, educate people who don't know about podcasts that would dig listening to this about how they can listen to a podcast and turn them onto our show and you can always do the click through thing on amazon if you go to grumpyoldgeeks.com in our store area because if you're going to buy things anyways you can you know throw a few pennies our way or go to grumpyoldgeeks.com slash vpn and uh protect yourself against the oncoming sl- onslaught of the 1984-ness of the universe but i did talk to ivor off the air and mm-hmm. uh he, it, he did end up going to iTunes and giving us a review. So we appreciate that very much. And uh, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next one comes from Jeff Dyson. Dyson? <laughs> D-Y-A-S-O-N. This is, this is one time I've it's, got a tum- tongue twister. It, it's, it's my vacuum cleaner with a typo. <laughs> it, is, it, is. it has the proper amount of suction. Uh, you have talked about a minimum wage on the last couple of shows. Here's a link to the ideas of an Australian economist whose take on this is in the form of a job guarantee. And this is part of a more modern way of looking at economics. And we have, we'll have the link in the show notes and he says, bye Jeff. So are you there? I lost you. I think for a second. Oh, okay. That's good. Cause oh. I, was, I had to, I had to mute and cough. <laughs> okay. Um, so I finished, the, I finished, I said, bye, Jeff. So you want to okay. do any, anything after that? Yep. Sure. Uh, I, I mean, I tried to scan through all of this and uh, there's a, there's a lot of numbers <laughs> and there's a lot of, uh, kind of figures being crunched and things like that. But what it doesn't explain is what, what, what are these jobs that will be guaranteed? That's, that's where, you know, if we, if we're, if we've got robots doing almost everything, what are we, are we going to pay people just to push a tin can around? You got it. That, somebody, that's, somebody's, that's somebody's got to, you know, oil the robots. Somebody, yeah. Well, the other robots can oil the robots. Ooh, sexy. Oh shit! Yeah, that's that's some orborous stuff going on right there. 
Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I, I we, we definitely I, I, people need to explore this stuff. We need to start taking this stuff really seriously and start looking into it because uh, it's coming, people. It's coming faster than we would like. Yep. Thanks for all the feedback. Head over to GrumpyOldGeeks.com and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. Closing shout outs. Uh, my first shout out is to friend of the show and personal friend Ashley, who did a really interesting write up, unfortunately, on me. Um, <laughs> uh, she does some really interesting stuff uh, and writing up about uh, music and feminism and politics and all of that. Uh, her latest one is... Uh, Taking the Long Way, How the Dixie Chicks Can Help Us Through These Dark Times. Uh, it's a good read. And if you remember what happened with the Dixie Chicks uh, back in 2002, 2003 with uh, Bush and what's going on with them now, it's a, it's a good good read. I highly recommend it. And my second shout out goes to Toronto FC. As you know, I'm sitting here in Toronto right now. They won last night beating uh, Montreal and they are going for the first time to the uh, MLS Cup final, which will be next uh, Saturday here in Toronto against uh Seattle. So that'll be fun. And I may even be going. I think I have a ticket. Oh, good for you. I'm guessing I'm not getting any fucking maple cookies this time either. Um, you know, what I'm planning on doing is throwing them out the window while I'm flying over Chicago on the way home. So, you know what? That's just about as effective as the last time or seven times you've been to Toronto because you just usually eat them on the way home. But throwing them out the window will at least make me feel a little better because you're denied the pleasure of eating them. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, glad to, glad to have that. Uh, my shout out is to uh, my other podcast partner, MXV. We just did a new "Does It Have Legs" on the uh, the anniversary of train spotting. We have done we've done a train spotting episode. It will be out sometime next week. Uh, look for that one if you like our movie reviews from crazy grumpy old <laughs> movie fans. Um, because Train Spotting 2 is coming in January. So if you want to get up to speed with Train Spotting, this is a great place to start. And wow, you just name checked two different podcasts in one little go. Hey man, I'm a fucking pro. Does it uh, have legs up to speed with the grumpy old geeks? Yes, yes. And uh <laughs> Train Spotting is not vapid, is all I gotta say. Oh, so, look at that. <laughs> and rest in peace, Ron Glass, who a lot of people know from Barney Miller, but I loved him as Shepard from Firefly. He is he is no longer with us, sadly enough. So yes. Uh, so much for come, bringing, bringing him back for the series, but they did kill him in the last movie. So what are you going to do? Let it go, Jason. It's never coming back. I know I'm a brown coat at heart. What are you going to do? Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Jason DeFilippo and all my info and links are, <laughs> all my info and links <laughs> are to, <laughs> I still screw this up every damn time or at about dot me slash JPD. And I'm Brian Schulmeister, and you can follow me on Twitter at Slenderfungus. I really got to change that domain. Yeah, I think so. Grumpy Old Geeks is a partially fan-supported show. If you'd like to help us out, please visit patreon.com slash GOG and sign up. Even as little as a buck a month helps keep us on the air. And we do take one-time donations. Just go to grumpyoldgeeks.com and click on the PayPal link in the sidebar. If you're cheap or broke but still want to support the show, please go to grumpyoldgeeks.com slash iTunes and leave us a glowing review and five stars. And at the very least, please share the show with your friends. Grumpyoldgeeks.com is where you can listen to shows, leave feedback, ask us questions that we can read on the air, or find links to our awesome sponsors and stuff we like. We have our new subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash GOG podcast. Throw us some links that we can read on the show. We're also on Twitter at GOG Podcast and on Instagram at Grumpy Old Geeks. Pretty please take our super fast user survey at grumpyoldgeeks.com slash survey. It'll take you less than 30 seconds and we're almost there. Just real quick, please, pretty please. Intro music for the show is provided by the band Among Us. You can find them on iTunes, Spotify, and Apple Music or get 10 exclusive tracks when you sponsor us on Patreon. Outro music for the show is provided by Andy Stachansky. You can follow Andy at twitter.com slash houseofandy and he's also on SoundCloud at grumpyoldgeeks.com slash Andy where you can listen to this song in its entirety. Voiceovers for the show are provided by Robert Fogarty. You can check out his writing and editing services at scribblepinch.com. Show notes for all the links discussed in this episode can be found at grumpyoldgeeks.com slash 188. And thanks again to 1Password for their support of Grumpy Old Geeks. Choose life. Choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone, somewhere cares.